of current and former prisoners in Oregon have a chance to get their cases retried and possibly to clear their names. Fox 12 investigates how a change in state law at the end of last year is finally starting to make an impact in Oregon's criminal justice system. Fox 12 investigative reporter Adrian Thomas joins us now in studio with that story. Adrian. Kim Shauna, for nearly 100 years, Oregon was the only state in the country, along with Louisiana, that allowed for non-unanimous non jury verdicts when convicting someone of a felony. Oregon voters voted in favor of implementing non-unanimous jury verdicts in a ballot measure back in 1934. But in 2020, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Ramos versus Louisiana that non-unanimous jury verdicts are unconstitutional. This ruling stopped the practice of non-unanimous jury verdicts in felony convictions, saying it violated a defendant's constitutional right to an impartial jury. So where did that leave Oregonians who had served time or were still in prison as a result of these non-unanimous verdicts? Oregon State Supreme Court took that issue up at the end of 2022 in the case Watkins versus Ackley and ruled that those incarcerated or formerly incarcerated through non-unanimous jury verdicts could have their cases retried and possibly dropped altogether. Now, the state's legal system is starting to revisit hundreds of criminal cases. I'm nowhere near the person I was when I went in. And um, I don't know if you noticed, I avoided the word man or adult. I was 18 years old, but I don't think you're a man at 18. Enrique Batista was sentenced to about 23 and a half years in prison back in March of 2003 for four felony assault charges during the summer of 2002. In the indictment, Batista was charged with beating another man with a baseball bat and then several days later, stabbing three men at the Woodburn Inn in Marion County. Court documents from Batista's sentencing say that he admitted to being affiliated with a gang, but he says he did not commit the crimes he's accused of. Prosecutors claimed that the stabbing incident was a, quote, violent crime spree in which Batista was out to prove how tough and violent he really was. Batista has and still maintains his innocence in both incidents, but was found guilty on all four charges. The incident where he was charged with beating a man with a baseball bat, as well as the three charges connected to the triple stabbing, were tried as one case. But according to court documents, one juror found Batista not guilty on the three stabbing charges. Under state law at the time, that meant Batista would still be convicted on the stabbing assault charges, but wouldn't have in most other states. At the time when that happened, had you been in any other state, besides Oregon or Louisiana, you wouldn't have been convicted. What goes through your mind? Well, there was always um, a sense of uh, frustration. Like, it shouldn't be like this, and why is this happening? But it was happening, so I had to deal with it. The three men he allegedly stabbed, Jose Gomez Galeote, Teodoro Aldaco Diaz, and Javier Ramirez Chavez, were not listed as witnesses. And Batista says the three men were never heard from again after giving a statement to police and did not attend the trial. Batista feels he served such a long sentence on not much evidence. The conviction and subsequent incarceration separated him from his then one-year-old daughter. Did that eat at you? all those years? I don't think resentment would be the right word to explain what I felt, but it was more of um, a dissatisfaction, frustration, uh, a lot of loneliness. Possibly putting an end to some of that frustration and dissatisfaction for those in prison is Lewis and Clark law professor Aliza Kaplan. She's one of the leading legal experts on this issue, advocating for the end of non-unanimous jury convictions and getting these cases retried has been Kaplan's primary focus for years. This is a failure of our system to have a rule like non-unanimous juries for so long here in Oregon. Um, this is about having constitutional rights. It's bigger than any one case. Um, we had to end this practice. According to the Oregon Department of Justice, there are at least 676 cases statewide that are eligible to be retried and have the defendants resentenced or have their cases dismissed altogether. In some of the state's largest counties, Multnomah County has up to 98 cases, up to 39 in Clackamas County, 83 in Marion County, and 87 cases in Washington County. Over the last few years, Kaplan and the team of law students she works with at Lewis & Clark put together a massive educational push for those in and out of prison. 
the goal to get as many people convicted under split juries to understand their new legal rights. And we also played, I think, a really special role, which is making sure that people who are incarcerated understood all the different rulings as they came out, what it meant generally for their cases, um, provided paperwork um, and samples for people to file, to have access to a lawyer to bring a claim if they had a non-unanimous jury. Earlier this year, Enrique Batista was one of those prisoners who learned he may be able to have his case retried. He got a new public defender in February and by July had taken the legal steps to get his case retried and be released from prison about two and a half years early while the legal proceedings played out once again. He was out on a $150,000 bail. It basically is you start from scratch. Mm. Imagine you just got arrested all over again and the same proceedings are taking place. The only difference is I had 20 years to study my case and no one went wrong. With his new lawyer, Batista was determined to clear his name of those assault charges for allegedly stabbing three men at the Woodburn Inn all those years ago. Batista was willing to go to trial again and risk possibly being sent back to prison to serve the rest of his sentence, a risk he was willing to take. They gave me a choice. Plead guilty, you did most of the time, you get time served, you can go live your life. But the fact that I fought for 21 years, claiming my innocence, fighting for my innocence, and doing the work of an attorney, paralegal, uh, secretary, all of that on my own. I had no help and I had to do that. It felt like, why would I give up now? But good news finally came less than a month ago. On October 19th, the Marion County District Attorney dismissed those three assault charges, saying the court was unable to locate victims and essential witnesses due to the passage of time. This was the weight lifted off of Batista's shoulders he never thought would be a reality. Well, it wasn't until recently that, you know, I, I felt a sense of relief, finally. Um, I felt like I was always walking on eggshells. I don't know what's going to happen. Even though Batista stands by his innocence on all the charges, including the first assault charge where the jury unanimously found him guilty, he says he changed for the better during his years behind bars. He says he thought long and hard about who he wanted to be and make a change from the troubled path he was on in his youth. I can tell you that I wish I would have met someone like me today. There was no one like me. So I feel like in a lot of ways I can be that someone for someone else right now. They say that uh, no one can help everybody, but anybody can help somebody. And Batista has put those words to action. You might have seen the logo tag on his shirt in our interview, which stands for Taking Accountability Group. Uh, group. Batista says it's a group he became involved with while in prison, where formerly incarcerated individuals work with at-risk youth and share their stories in the hopes of steering young people on a better path in life. Well, let's talk about how this type of thing impacts the prosecutors, the victims in these cases. Uh, how does all of that work? Absolutely. So some district attorney offices uh, that we reached out to for this story told us that some of the challenges that they're experiencing with these cases is just the age of some of them. Right. Some of them are 20 or 30 years old, and it can be a lot to track down witnesses and evidence. And some of those witnesses, um, especially in the you know in the case of Enrique Batista, those witnesses weren't able uh, to be found. Wow. Um, so that's a challenge that they have, they come up with um, you know when trying to retry these cases. As far as victims goes, um, victims advocates have told us that it can be very re-traumatizing mm -hmm. for these victims to basically go back to you know, those early days of right after the crime happened, whatever happened to them or a family mem family member. And in a story tomorrow uh, here on Good Day Oregon, we'll uh, take a deeper dive into the impact on victims with these cases. All right, Adrian Thomas, thank you.